All right, welcome back. Another episode, Ghetto Correspondent News Network. I forgot what the hell I was for a second. I'm like, <laughs> I might have, I might have a little fucking wet brain, and I ain't drinking over two years. But I'm at damn it, Frankie Diamonds over there. How you doing, brother? What's good? What's good? All right, so uh, another week, man. America is still with the shits. Um, I ain't gonna lie, I'm enjoying this because I feel like. Uh, America is starting to open their eyes and realize, like, yo, fucking, we have more power than um, they thought initially. Mm -hmm. They thought they, you know, and for lack of better words, they, you know, had their foot on our neck. And you know, condolences to uh, George Floyd and his uh, family because that man did die literally by the law of the by the foot of the law on his neck. And um, yeah, America's tired. This is a straw that broke the camel's back. I did a video on that this week. Um, you guys make sure y'all go check that out. And yeah, um, people out there, you know something is uh, changing. I seen somebody do it outside earlier with a Black Lives Matter uh, sign. So damn. some of it white guilt. And I did a video on that. I didn't put it out yet. But um, like I think some a lot of this is white guilt. Because it's like, where were y'all at when they did Mike Brown's protest? Eric Gardner? Uh, Tamir Rice, Trayvon Martin, it took all of that to lead up to this for you to finally say, you know what, the hell with it. But I, I still am a firm believer. I think quarantine has had the biggest impact on this as far as America waking up. Because what was the whole uh, message with quarantine? We're all in this together, right? That's what they kept yeah, telling us. I was what it was supposed to be. And then when fucking they let a few people back out, the police was like, it's almost like the police was waiting in the cut. As soon as they see niggas come out, it's like, wham, right upside the head. I was like, yo, goddamn, nigga, I just been. Yeah. So, yeah, that happened because you, when, um, what was it, Memorial Day weekend? Or it might have been before that when, you know, they had the, they were showing people the two Americas where it was like um, the white people in New York City that was in the park and police were handing out masks and then. Mm -hmm. You see the black people and the police freaking clubbing them upside the head. And, and I think people are starting to research now. Like, it's more policing going on in our neighborhoods than their neighborhoods. Yeah. Uh, I, one thing I think is goofy, though, is people taking a knee with the cops. I don't understand that. <laughs> like, yeah, it, that's that's a little fishy. It's a video of an old guy. He got pushed. He got he got pushed by the cops in Buffalo. I don't know if you've seen it. And when they pushed him, he fell on the ground so hard his head started bleeding. Um, I heard about it, um, and I saw the 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 pictures. Unfortunately, those type of video I avoid a lot of those videos nowadays because I don't need to be any more angry. I don't need the hypertension to build. In, in well, me. it wasn't even that I could avoid it. It was just it just was there. I didn't know it was coming. Yeah. The day before, like I'm saying with the with the kneeling shit, the day before those same cops, that same cop that pushed him and cracked his mm -hmm. head, killed with him. Really. Yeah, that's why I brought it up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. These cops are just they're doing it just for like I don't know. It's kind of like a photo op, like a video op. Like okay, I'll yeah. do it. It makes the you know it makes them look good. But taking a knee, I mean, what the fuck is that? I seen Casanova over in Manhattan with the NYPD. He was like, take a knee, take a knee, and the cop took a knee, and everybody was like, oh, I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, embarrassing, man. What are y'all doing? That you know what that 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 is embarrassing because it's like. You know the police are just going to do it because they're like, all right, what can we do yeah. to keep these yeah. motherfuckers from acting up? The shit I seen was in Flint, Michigan, where the cops took off all of their armor and all of their shit, and they just walked with the people. That was really cool. Dope. That's admirable. Yeah. That taking the knee shit is corny, man. And like I say, if you know the the real uh, history about Kaepernick and the whole taking knee movement, originally he was sitting down during the anthem. But the NFL told him it was too disrespectful to sit. So they said, well, they suggested, why don't you just take a knee instead? And that's how that whole thing came. Taking a right. knee is not really symbolic of, uh, I, I don't know. I, I never looked at taking a knee as symbolic of something as far as us calling a truce or whatever. I mean, right. but I'm not kneeling to you. Taking a knee to me, what that symbolized was, uh, I need, I need a moment. I need to catch my breath. I need, uh, I need a break. There's too much going on. I can't stand with the weight of the world on my shoulders as a black man. Let me take a knee and let you know that it's heavy out here. But yeah. unfortunately, that message got lost in 
the whole fucking flag. Like, all right, boss. Yeah. yeah. It, it went into the flag. All right. So, um, a lot of that has been, um, these conversations that we're having right now, a lot of these conversations have been going on throughout the week. Um, I want to start the show off, um, talking about celebrities showing their true colors regarding protesters and the rioting and looting. Um, we've seen several black celebrities come out and speak. Um, some of them were very not um, what people thought. And I put out my message basically when I said to people, uh, we need to stop expecting these celebrities who essentially don't live like us to empathizing with us you know what I'm saying they they live in freaking huge houses with maids and personal chefs and like you could grow up poor black you could be that's how crazy it is you could grow up let's say for the first 25 years of your life poor in black America and then be wealthy for like five or ten years and you're completely disconnected because mm -hmm. the first thing niggas do when they get money what they do you move out of the neighborhood you go live with white folks and then you yep. just can't you disconnect yourself fully from the, the struggle. So when I see people like the dream who was talking about, y'all need to stop. I put so much money in Atlanta. When I see people like Trina, who's been, I mean, Trina been making money since the late nineties. She does, she, she's completely disconnected with the black struggle. I mean, she sounded so fucking ignorant. They said, when you get pulled over, do you get scared? She said, no, I got my license and registration. I know my rights. I said, yeah, that bitch is, that's a, that's a, that's a special type of bra right there. Which is which is insane because everybody knows that an outspoken black woman is just as dangerous as a black man, right? Because Certainly, they, yeah. they they have no problem voicing their opinion. They have yeah. no problem letting you know what it is. And they yeah. will stand up to you. They don't care who you are. And so for her to say that, you know, is like, all right, let's forget about Sandra Bland who was a black woman that was pulled over by the police and knew her rights and had her license and registration yeah. and ended up dead in police custody. Like when Trina made that statement, it came out very ignorant and irresponsible. Uh, because, yeah, of course you apologize, but I'm like, did you really learn your lesson? Or are you just doing that because it's just damage control and you got a lot more heat than you thought? And, and when Trina Daddy is the voice of reason, that right there lets you need to, that, that, yeah. When Trick Daddy is the voice of reason, you know you fucking up. Yeah, because we he he understands what it is. He's like, look, yeah, we we are good, but our, these are our people. These are the people that put money into our pockets, and you know, people were saying um, that you know because she was going through something, her brother was just killed, you know, so she's upset. But it's like you're taking out your anger in the wrong way. We're upset because our brothers and and fathers and uncles have been getting killed by the hands of the law for however oh, long. One person, yeah. And she's like, well, y'all didn't even know she really, I thought that was her next, I thought the next, I thought the next thing she was gonna say was y'all didn't even know him. Like, I thought she was gonna take it to that. Yeah, right, just be straight up ignorant. Yeah. But when it comes to that sassy black woman, I'll send you a video Patrice O'Neill did. That shit was like, he broke it down psychology, like the how the sassy black woman, white men find him to be hilarious. And they don't really think them, they don't look at them as a threat. Some of them think it's just funny. Some of them, it might turn them on. And then the white women, they're like liberated by it. Mm -hmm. Like they, they look at them like they're the heroes and shit. Like they live through the sassy black woman. So it's, it's kind of a weird complex, the, the sassy black woman and how white America views them. Um, they don't really look at them the same way as us. But at the same time, like I say, if Trina thinks her license and registration is going to save her <laughs> if she come across the wrong cop, like you're tripping. But for her to call, you know how she sounded like a fucking Karen with that statement when she called them animals and said they need to be locked up in a zoo. Yeah, and you live in Miami where- That is some Hillary Clinton yeah, fucking 94 super predator, yeah. There's nothing in Miami but old white folks, Cubans, and black folks. So what do you think when you say that? You know what I'm saying? She's on Who Miami. are you talking to, right? Yeah, who are you talking to? It's nothing in Miami but old white people, Cubans, and black folks. And she retracted everything. And the thing that I don't respect is I don't respect when people retract their statement. Mm. I, as ignorant as that statement is and as ignorant as this is going to sound, I 
I would have more respect for you, even with the little bit of respect that I don't have for the situation with uh-huh. her saying that. I will respect you more as a human being for standing on what you said because obviously you said it and it came from a place of truth. A place of truth, yeah. That's like the so, true reason thing. I was like, bro, don't apologize. I, I respect your honesty, even though it's stupid. It's ridiculous. Because yep. you, you know, felt like, like that the whole entire time. And he did because he actually said that. I know it's not a segue into that, but he said those same comments like three years ago. It's just, like I say, it wasn't a quarantine. People were moving at 100 miles an hour. Life was going regular. And people, it's a lot of slick shit that some of these people have said in the past before, similar to what they've said now. You just overlooked it. Mm-hmm. You know? wasn't paying attention, but when you're sitting at home all day and you're not working, like half of the country is, they pick you up got, on that. You got a lot of time on your hands to do some research. You got yeah. a lot of time on your hands to... That's why the protests are still going full swing. If everybody was still working, I don't think, I think it would have probably slowed down by now. But oh, yeah. The half of the country is out of work, they're like, fuck it, we ain't got nothing else to do. That's <laughs> so, a fact. That is a fact. They so, out there. So Drew Brees basically said that, you know, the NFL players who were kneeling in silent protests was uh, disrespecting the flag. And, you know, his, what was it, his grandfather or something was. Uh, Father's fought in World War II. So he, right. just, he, he cries and he thinks it's disrespectful if you don't stand to the, for the flag and raise your, put your hand over your chest. Right. Exactly. And isn't Drew Brees one of those players when the NFL was telling everybody they should be fired if they do it and the whole New Orleans Saints team came out and he took a knee with them? I'm yeah, pretty sure. That, but, then at the, but then he said half, I think he said something like half of the, he, he was kneeling for half of the uh, anthem and then he stood up for the rest. Some, some weird shit. Come on, man. Ain't no such, ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. Ain't yeah. no such thing. So, <laughs> And so he 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 retracted that statement, right? Here's mm-hmm. another one, dude. Stand in your truth. And you know, this, for him, it's harder than Trina because you play in a sport, you play in one of the blackest cities in the country. Those black fans in New Orleans, like, they will run through a, a wall for Drew Brees. You play with some outspoken brothers that they talk shit, they do podcasts, they do interviews, social media. Half his teammates, they they shitted on him on a on online after he so he he had the pressure, he had to say something. So I knew it was coming. But for him to he should have said, Hey, the way I said it might have been wrong. The timing was wrong. But no, he shouldn't have said anything. He should have said yes, no comment. The timing was wrong. Uh, Ed Reed called him a sucker. <laughs> he is a sucker because you played with all of these black men. You had ample uh, opportunities to make this statement back then when it was uh, a big deal. When yeah, everybody, I was about to say he made this statement. It's his people, and I'm, I, I, that's what I do. I hold his, his teammates accountable for that are still on the team now. He mm-hmm. said this shit basically in 2017. Hmm. What was the reaction then? Nobody so cared. No, they overlooked it. Yeah, and like you can see pictures of Drew Brees. He's a conservative. It's well known. You see pictures of him hanging out with Trump. He's he's a conservative. He's a he's a he's the average wealthy forty year old white man. And that's what? funny because uh, because yeah. Trump because Trump tried to uh, Trump called for lack of better words he called Drew Brees a sucker for pulling back on his statement because Trump was <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> Trump. Um, I, I I have to get the the statement verbatim. I can't keep but, up with Trump's timeline. Trump's tweets be I, I can't even keep up with all. Yeah, that. nah, he he be bugging. He be bugging. I'm. But it's I'm the truth, to, though, because like I said, you are you are a sucker. Because why did you take? You should have just said, "Hey, the timing was wrong." And at first, I thought it was a bait question. Maybe he's doing an interview with Yahoo Finance, and they asked it. They didn't ask it. He just brought it up. I'm like, what are you thinking? Mm-hmm. And, and like I said, most of his teammates are black. Yeah, um, and that's the so that's the crazy part, right? So football is the one sport that is you know very physical, very abusive, all of that. And Drew Brees realized that solidarity is more important, or he should know. Damn, my supervisor calling me again. He should know that um, solidarity is more important in football than anything. Ultimately, what I'm saying is. Drew Brees should not be making these comments because those are the same guys that have to protect you on the line. Yeah, We've seen well, this time and time again, right? 
most of his offensive line guys are white. That's usually how it is in the NFL. The old linemen are usually a bunch of big white guys, maybe one or two token blacks. But the receivers, the, the guys he's throwing footballs to, yeah. most of, you know, most of the guys who catches his touchdowns, they're black. Um, you know, the defense, like I say, it's, it's NFL, and I watch the NFL. It's like it's institutionalized slavery in, in sports, basically. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, I've, he, I've been saying that for years, and people call me crazy. And I watch it, and I'm saying that. And I was telling them, I was like, yeah, it's kind of hypocritical to me, but I watch it, and it is like a systematic slavery. It's a slavery-driven type of system. The quarterbacks are white. They get all the glory. and But most of the people who do the dirty work in the trenches and do all of that other good shit, the, the guys who are fast and strong, they mm -hmm. black, bro. And that's why it's like 70% of the league is black. But the biggest stars are these white quarterbacks. And most of them have no – the fact that he could be in the NFL all these years, be around all these black men on a daily basis all these years, and he still is that disconnected from, like, black reality, that shit is crazy to me. Yeah. You know, the fact that you could be around that many black folks and still not have a clue. Of what's going on. Or, or not be smart enough to not say some stupid shit like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's no insensitivity in his comments. Yeah. All right, so here's what Trump said. His um, Trump's uh, exact words to Drew Brees' statement. He said he should not have taken it. He should not have taken back his original stance on honoring our magnificent American flag. And he wrote um, the pair. Where's where's the other tweets? We should be. Uh, these are Trump's tweet. He said, "Old glory is to be reverted." Uh, revered, cherished, and flown high. He said, we should be standing up straight and tall, ideally with a salute or a hand on the heart. There's no other things you can protest. There, are, No, there are other things you can protest, but not our great American flag. In all caps, no kneeling. Come on now. <laughs> wow. He called him a sucker. For lack of better words, he said, use a sucker. Yeah, and, and they, they friends, or they, they were. Or they were like, you know. I'm sure associated. they're still buddies. I'm sure they Because, listen, all he got to do, donate to the Republican convention or whatever, send them a nice little check, and it's yeah. all like they're going to pat them on the back like, oh, man, you know, next time don't speak on black issues, blah, 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 whatever. And that's a good segue into something else, but I'll get into that. But, yeah, uh, Drew Brees is a sucker because you see a lot of um, companies got exposed to being Trump supporters, right? Yeah, yeah, I did see that. I did see that. But before we go to that, let's um, let's stick with um, people and their uh, celebrities and their accomplishments. What was that girl, Shakina? Shakina, yeah, that's Tiny's. That's Tiny's best friend. She she got on on uh, social media and was crying about people destroying the Gucci store. Uh. When. How long ago was it when everybody was supposed to be boycotting Gucci, right? Because like Gucci it, had these racist freaking images, right? Like, uh, how soon we forget? And we as black people are so forgiving because we want we want to wear your shit. We want to look fly in this Gucci. Man, give me a damn break. She, she, said, that. she said that she don't care about Gucci. She don't wear it. She was just saying she just felt like it was bad. Why are y'all stealing from these people? They didn't. Just, they don't have nothing to do with that. That man getting killed. Y'all need to stop. And then Tory Lanez had to check her. And it's weird because Tory Lanez a few years ago went overseas to a Gucci store. They refused to give him service, and his response was spending like twelve racks in the store. And I was like, "You fucking idiot!" But I guess he's grown up. He's gotten mature since. He got a hairline. That nigga said, All right, "I'm I'm here now." <laughs> yeah, he bought some shit and got it. But he done, he been out there with the people and he's been checking celebrities for a while now. So he had to get on Facebook, Instagram Live and check her. Like, what the fuck did you And I about? respected that because yeah. it's like, once again, we've, there's a pattern of Gucci and these high end brands disrespecting our culture, disrespecting mm -hmm. our people. And the only thing they respect is the damn money. And that's why Tory Lanez thought, oh, you're going you're gonna to profile me? I'm going to drop 12 racks in here. And they're like, okay, you're still a nigga. Thank you. Yeah. On your way. And her being like, oh, don't rob from these people. What have these people done to our community? Exactly. And the sad thing is she's older than him. That girl's got to be a, a, over, every bit of over 35 and late 30s. And Tory Lanez is like my age, like 28, 29. Okay. Yeah. 
age has nothing against, you know, wisdom and learning. Anybody could teach you anything. But yeah, I mean, the fact that somebody younger than her, who's not even from America, he's, he's Canadian. Right. You know, more quote unquote woke than, than, than she is. And she's from Georgia. How can you be black from the South? Like, you'd be surprised how many That's the thing too, black right? from the South or just, now I ain't trying to shit on the Southern people, but you would think if anybody can understand racism as a black person, it could be someone from the South. But it like, should be this bitch, you know, <laughs> that's insane. And so and then she retracted her statements. I ain't pay attention to her stupid ass. She's not a real celebrity to me anyway. She's just, yeah, because I, I was confused. I'm like, who the hell is she? Like, I'm like trying to figure out what she done. And I watch Tiny and T.I. show. She was on there. She was Tiny's like do buddy. She was like a little buddy. She just hung around the house and they, they gave a her gopher. Something. Yeah, she's like a little sidekick. She don't got no talent. She's just. You That's know, crazy. They should go get her nails done with and shit like that. All right. And so to top it all off, um, Roger Godell, who's the, um, I guess he's what, the chairman or the. Yeah, the, Roger Goodell. Right, of NFL. He admits, he admitted that the NFL was wrong for silencing players who protested against injustice. Now everybody wants to claim that, oh, we, we were wrong. We were so sorry. Like They knew they was wrong three years ago. You know what I mean? It's just that you're, you're seeing a lot of people coming out, oh, we support Black Lives Matter now. I'm like, hey, as soon as white people get involved, now y'all want to come out and admit your wrongdoing. Yeah. You know, but I guarantee you, if it was nothing but black people out here in these streets, these same companies that have come out and made these bullshit apologies and these PR statements would not be doing them. No, they wouldn't. Yeah. And they were saying, um, there's a meme going around where it was saying, uh, from the scene from uh, Menace to Society where Kane was in the car with old boy and he was about to rob him for the wheels and he made him get a burger. When he had the gun to his face, somebody said that this is how black people are pressing companies to speak on Black Lives Matter. And mm -hmm. I said, you're accurate. That's exactly what's going on. Black people are pressing them. But mm -hmm. they're pressing them, and these people are just saying whatever they want to say, and they're gone. Oh, yeah. They're just they're saying. Because, like, like, all them companies that we found out donated money to Trump, Wendy's in particular, Chick-fil-A and all of them, they all apologized and, and came up and made donations the next day and were like, oh, we support Black Lives Matter, too. I don't like, understand yeah. how Chick-fil-A told y'all they don't like fucking gay people. They yeah. said that it is a crime. They spoke and they told you where they stood and niggas still went and ate there. Yeah, they're a Christian-based company. They don't work Sundays. They just a deep South type of, you know, aura about them. But Chick-fil-A can do no wrong because they got crack in them sandwiches and niggas love it. Look, them sandwiches is fire, but... I, I don't care. Nobody, niggas wasn't going to stop eating Chick-fil-A. They used to bash they all like... Niggas all ain't going to stop eating chicken. Now, I could cut out Wendy's. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm good on Wendy's. But, um... Now chicken, yeah. that's a whole now. You come on now, chicken. It's a black staple, man. Yeah, niggas ain't need that chicken. But, but that that's a good good segue though. Also into, um, uh, companies who are now quote unquote supporting the Black Lives Matter movement, but mm -hmm. the companies who are like this has exposed these companies who are Trump supporters, but or they donate to his campaign, whatever you want to say. Uh, these are, there's a lot of companies that people love and that these companies claim to uh, support Black Lives Matter, which I, I'm a firm believer in you can, you can do both. You can, you can be a Trump supporter and not be a racist because you believe what the guy says as far as uh, whatever little bit of politics he says, like, whatever you want to believe, like, the guy's a wild fucking kid. I mean, if you talk to any accountant, they'll tell you, if you're wealthy, if you're a wealthy man, woman, any race, the best thing for you to do if you're as a registrative voter is to vote Republican. Because right. they're gonna, they're gonna, their policies are in the best right for the wealthy American. You know, less taxes, keep the, keep you, keep the rich rich, keep the poor poor. So, I mean, sometimes it's not even really about emotional shit it's just if you're wealthy and like i say a lot of black wealthy people vote republican they just don't yep. say it yeah they don't say it fact, Charles but they, they're letting they you know it. they're letting you know with those comments about like oh stealing from gucci and oh, lock yeah. these animals up they let you know what they actually because a lot of them vote sounds like, very republican-ish 
Michael Jordan just donated a hundred million dollars and spread it out, but he was a Republican. He's been a Republican for years. He used to donate yeah. to prison. You know, so I mean, that's that's just in their best interest that people with money are gonna do that. They're gonna vote Republican because that's what makes sense. That is that is what what happens. But like I said, I I, I believe that you can't like it. It sounds crazy, and people would probably yeah. want to tear me up for it. But I do believe that you can like both sides. You can be a supporter of both sides. It doesn't mean that you necessarily are married to either side of it, but you're just like, look, I just want to live in a, a place where I can keep making money and nobody gets hurt. That's all I want. Unless you're Candace Owens. Oh man. You want to, I want to save her for last. I want to save her <laughs> for last. We're going to, we're going to definitely get into Candace Owens. You already know. Uh, but, um, so there are companies who are speaking out now, um, in support of Black Lives Matter. And it made me wonder, like, are they just doing it for the PR look or are they really about that life? PR. Do you think so? Yeah, you got to show me more than just one statement. You know what I mean? I just right. want to people. I'm not, I, got, I got trust issues and you got to really put your money where your fucking mouth is. Anybody can get their secretary to write up a PR statement. But right. until you put money where your mouth is and do something about it and stay consistent with it, because right now, that's, it's like a trend. It's like social media, you know, the trend right now is we all love black people and we all fuck with black folks. And I'm like, well, two weeks ago, this- Two weeks ago, you ain't even care. Yeah, two weeks ago, black people were the number one race dying from COVID-19 and there was no news footage. They weren't talking about that on the news. Right. You know, so I don't really know what to think about some of this shit. Some of this shit is just fake wokeness and some of it is just people just want to be a part of something. It's like a big trending topic. It's a trend. Yeah, like you see a lot of, uh, uh, as they call them, social media influencers getting busted for just like pulling up for the photo op with like a little pro uh, a picket sign and they just mm. step out in the street in front of the fucking crowd, take a picture, then hop in their bins and go. Wow. <laughs> Who did that? A couple of white girls. I mean, no surprise, a little Becky's. But the um the twitter C- ceo um he donated 3 million dollars to Kaepernick's know your rights camp so would you, you say that black, black twitter has kept twitter alive for, for a long time like when i got on there in the beginning it wasn't even called black twitter but we kind of like built that whole you know that whole platform up shit black twitter runs oh, yeah. twitter least you could fucking do is pay your dues and give niggas money yeah. back yeah it's put some back in the community what about um Serena Williams' husband. I can't pr- pronounce that nigga's last name. His first name is Alex, though. I'm calling him Alex Serena Williams. Um, the, oh, he's he a, got her last name? He might as well. Oh, <laughs> yeah, his wife is the man, right? Yeah, not the <laughs> man. She is that, you know. She's but, a yeah, she, she, she's, I mean, he's obviously richer, but she's the more popular person. And, you know, that's no disrespect to them because I don't, I don't really know the guy, but he's the co-founder of Reddit. Now, he resigned from the board and he asked for a seat to be filled with a black candidate. Okay. What do you say to that? Well, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. Maybe, maybe if you're going to marry a white guy, the least you could do is make sure that he does something for the community. Shit. I got to give her props for that. If, if she could get her husband to, Pass down some uh, big opportunities off like that. That's cool. I didn't know yeah. her uh, with Reddit, though. I didn't know that. Yeah, that was like the big um, thing. Like when she when she married him or when she got with, I think when she married him, everybody was like, yeah, go Serena. Da, 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 da. And I got into it with a few people because I was like, damn, y'all are cheering Serena on for marrying a white man, a rich white man. But when a black man does it. Oh, yeah. It's all shit, hell break. You know? <laughs> A, a, a rich a, a billionaire, billionaire. yeah everyone you go girl get the bag now let somebody let let a, what if lebron was married to one of these white bitches oh my god they used yeah. to give they used to give kobe a lot of hate for the vanessa back in the early yeah. days you know oh, his yeah. family didn't even fuck with him because of that shit but it's, just, it's funny how now that he ain't here oh, oh it's nothing but love for his wife you know what i'm saying like people are mad phony People used to be like, oh, she's a gold digger. You can tell his father and them didn't like her. The word right. is, they, the funeral, I ain't going to get into all that, but, you know, they definitely wasn't feeling Vanessa. But, yeah, you're right. It is a, a double standard. Like, we can't date white girls, but they could, black girls could date successful white men and get the applaud. Right. 
and everybody everybody's upset at that i i, I want to just stay there for a second like we just a quick second because th this is something real close to me um because people fail to realize that like when that man married that woman that's his life his parents might have had somebody that they thought he should have married but dude you're my parents you brought me into this world yeah but i don't owe you a goddamn thing and i hate that we as black people feel like we have to put up with our parents' toxic behavior because they brought us into this world. Mm -hmm. Don't. You don't owe them anything. Like, look, I'll do what I can do for you, but if you're going to be toxic and be upset with me about the choices that I make in my life when I've made myself successful and I'm here, like, yeah, you guys helped me get here. I'll give you nothing but credit. But you can't just think because I got here that all of a sudden – now I have to follow yours. And, you know, there are a lot of black people who believe that, oh, he should have, he should have went with what his parents said. No. Who's Probably to no say, question. but who's to say if he would have followed what his parents said and been the Kobe Bryant that we know today? Yeah. Yeah. The work ethic comes from his father and them. But then again, right. you go look at it two different ways. Cause I mean, Michael Jordan was just close to not going to that Nike meeting and his mother told him to go. She made him right. go. And it's life. If he didn't go, but that's, that's the whole fucking thing. Right, but he had, his mother told him about a business deal. Mm -hmm. His parents was trying to tell him who to have on his arm, who yeah. to put in his bed. A lot of you know what I'm saying? Do. So, yeah, I wouldn't just do that because no one can tell you, you know what I mean? That's your, who you're going to be with. That's your happiness is on the line. But, you know, you Right, and so. want to be with. And, and, you know, and people are probably going to, like, not like what I say, but if his parents weren't there, that might have been his wishes. He, they might have like not even settled whatever their issues were before he passed away. I don't know. I'm just saying this. That's a possibility, and people have to understand that your parents are human beings. They're people too. Mm -hmm. But if they're toxic and they don't bring any sort of happiness to your life, and they're bitter at you for the choices that you made, and you end up successful and you're you're happy in life. I don't care if you're successful or not, but if you're happy and they feel a way about it, you don't owe them anything. You have a yeah. right to cut them off. They're people too. And we as black people, we got to stop accepting toxic behavior from our parents just because they are our parents. Mm. And, all right, I'm going to get off my soapbox now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been wanting to say that for a while because people, you know, I, I like... Yeah, I've, I've, I've probably mentioned it before, too. Um, all right, so other companies like Netflix, Virgin USA CEO, um, Richard Bronson or whatever, and Nike have all came out to show their solidarity. Even fucking Apple Music on uh, Blackout Tuesday, um, when you hit the browse button, it took you, it, they played nothing but um, conscious, uh, spiritual black hip-hop and and uh, R and B joints. I clicked on that. I think there was a common song playing. I was like, "Oh, Apple Music. Sure. They they trying to do their thing." But mm -hmm. once again, are these people really down for the cause, or are they just doing it to save face? Yeah, exactly. That's that's the question. Because who is it? Jeff Bezos. He he. Um, the Shade Room posted a um, his uh, Instagram situation. He, some some lady emailed him because you know Amazon has a banner on their site that says, you know, Black Lives Matter, we stand in solidarity, blah, blah, blah. And some lady emailed him, probably a Karen, emailed him and was like, you know, more than black people support you and it's not right to say that Black Lives Matter and da, 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 this, that, and the third, right? You know that whole spill. I don't even, all of those emails are pretty much the same at this point. And, excuse me, he basically came back and told her the same thing that everybody's saying. It's not about saying that black lives matter more than yours, but look at what's going on in the world. Look at what's going on in America. It's sad that we have to say, we have to tell people that these lives matter, you know? And everybody was like, Oh, applaud that man. But is that a PR stunt? Is that him trying to save face? So we don't go genuine to the space because like i said he broke it down and right that'd be cool. you know 400 years old oppression i mean they programmed america to not care about black folks so mm -hmm. and now if he didn't say anything that would look more like pr but all he did was put the banner up and never responded to any emails 
Right. On the other side of that, before we leave this, um, you know how everybody's saying, oh, they only respect our money. So if these companies are making these statements to let us, to let us know, like, hey, I still want your dollar, you know, is that what we want or do we want more from them? Um, what I want, I mean, this, when, most of us are not going to stop. Don't have the discipline or the resources to shop elsewhere anyway. Um, My niggas ain't going to stop buying Jordans. Exactly. Uh, Jordan even said, fuck them kids that got yeah. killed at a sneaker release. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, allegedly, I don't know if he said that or not. It's one thing to make a statement and, you know, maybe a couple donations or whatever. But after that, that's it. Like I said, I'm not really out here asking for white people to feel sorry for me or to feel sorry for us. You can never um, apologize enough to replace 400 years of oppression. Just treat people on the same level and treat everybody equal. That's really all we want. I don't think most of us is out here really wanting revenge. You can't revenge 400 years. Right. I mean, it's too much revenge that's really at stake. So just treat us equally and treat us. When I go into a store, don't fucking send two, three people looking at me because you think I might steal something. You know what I mean? Just equal right. maybe all I'm looking for. I'm not asking for white folks to kiss my ass or to, uh, you know, roll a red carpet out for us. I think that's ridiculous. Just treat people like, you know, treat us the way y- y'all treat yourselves. You know? That's I all agree. I don't think you really, you know, they can apologize. How many times can you apologize? True. And that's the other thing, too. If you keep apologizing, it doesn't even look sincere. It just looks like you're saying, oh, I'm sorry. Like, you know, when you're a kid and you get caught doing something, you go, oh, I'm sorry. Every time your parents catch you. And if they don't freaking discipline you, all you want to do is keep saying, I'm sorry. You're not going to learn your lesson from it. And not to say that these companies have a lesson to learn, but they, they kind of do because we spend a lot of money. We keep this economy where it is we spend the most money and as black people yeah. make the least so the least y'all can do is be like yo stop killing our fucking customers <laughs> like, come on like that and that's why i'm like all right is it a pr stunt or is it really truth because are they trying to say yo i really value the black dollar so let's stop doing this but this right here everything that's going on right now is just the first step into a step of many because after you know injustice and prejudice and racism once we tackle that if you know we probably might never erase it but once we tackle that the next one is uh education healthcare, housing employment like to make it here all across the board uh, we gotta get that not guilty verdict first though that is first so we we we'll keep you guys uh, abreasted on that and um and more in in, in this whole situation because I feel like we haven't heard the end of it and it is our duty as you know within our name ghetto correspondents like we have to talk to the people on the ground like I'm not expecting celebrities to watch this video and be like oh yeah I agree with them no I want I I want to talk to the everyday Joe the working class hero the the father, you know, of the, the kids that he's got to put through school and the mom that's, you know, out there doing it on her own. Like, he's a child support. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to talk about child support right now. Everybody, this is with all of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's let's um, let's talk about Candace Owens. What everybody came here for, huh? Y'all came here. I, I freaking had to, had some words for her. Oh my God! Uh, that I watched that video. It's like almost eighteen minutes long. I couldn't get through it. I couldn't either because the first up to the first five minutes, I was like, "All right, I've I've heard enough." So for those of y'all who don't know, um, Candace Owens went on to what's that damn streaming platform that Twitter uses? Periscope. Yeah, she went on there. I kept trying to figure that name out for the longest. She Periscope. went on the Periscope and basically said that black people cater to the bottom of society. So we idolize criminals, uh, murderers, thieves, rapists, all of this other shit, which I want to say, I want to call bullshit because America in itself has always glorified snitches, rats. The, look at the movies. I mean, they, America, they've always done a great job of, some of their Confederate heroes and some of their biggest heroes are just as the president is in. I mean, look at Trump. 
So yeah, we we might glorify a few drug dealers, and you know, uh, I I did say I think a lot of a lot of, and I don't want to say it the wrong way, but a lot of black women when they're younger, they do they do seem what to desire more of the the criminal type, right? The thug type, you know. Then they get a little older, they get a couple of heartbreaks, and then they get smarter and they go on to the the good guys. But I mean, bitch, any uh, America's always been about gangsters. And look, Al Capone. Yep, that's what Al- I was getting into. Mobster movies. Yeah, and I like, watch all. This has been an American thing, mm-hmm. like, and it just so happens that I guess black people, quote unquote, look cooler at it, right? Because right. your your kids are the same ones that that come out here, white people's kids, and you know, other races who don't think who think that they're better than black but whatever y'all kids love our culture y'all okay. love to watch our movies paid in full was a movie right. about you know drug Which dealers cool. turn friends yeah they were poor then they got rich i advised al pacino and scarface why can't you do the same with denzel's frank lucas exactly it's a movie you know what I mean? exactly at least uh Frank Lucas was a real story. I mean, they t- they yeah. took the, uh, they took the Pablo Escobar thing in Scarface, but yeah. she's a broad face looking bitch. And I mean, I don't even know her, her uh, how much money she got. She's a conservative, I yeah, guess. She's Trump's payroll. She she's married to a white guy too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen some of her shows. She's just she's, she's disgusting. I, I don't know how much they're paying her. To, she just wants to. I think it's so much momentum is coming, and she's got to right. find a way to slow the momentum down. Cause she basically went up there and said, "Oh, um, George Floyd is not a martyr." Nobody yeah, not, said he was a martyr. They said he's not a hero. I'm like, no one right. said he was a hero. Nobody said he was a hero. This is just I, the straw that broke the yeah. the camel's back. Kids be like George Floyd when they grow up. I'm just saying, yeah. what happened to him was a catastrophe, and it just it happened at the right time, and America all seen it, and everyone just blacked out. No yep. pun intended. That's what happened. No I one said. Was a hero. I mean, that, that's that white supremacist talking. I want that's the thing about Candace Owens. You don't have to be white to be a white supremacist. No. Nope. What about in white supremacy? You can be any race. You've seen the Dominicans and dyke men running out niggas out the neighborhood. Which is crazy. Go. That's yeah. so crazy because it's when when up. when little Junior got stabbed up, when little Junior got stabbed up, who was who was, yeah. who was there standing arm in arm with them? Yeah. And then, like I say, they, they kissed and made up afterwards and was like, yo, it's all good, it's all good. But a lot of immigrants, they come here and because the media has brainwashed people that black people are the lowest scum in America with thieves, crooks, gangsters, uh, uneducated. They, they, they feed you this in the media and in television. And then when a lot of immigrants come over here, they think that about us. A lot of Africans come here and they think that about right. us. You see you know, the African lady in DC telling people, black people are just, they criminals, they don't work. They kill each other. I mean, it's it's a, this shit is deeper than you think. It's not just white people that are in, you know, white supremacists in their mind. Like it's a, it's 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 so complex. It's a mental man. thing. Yeah, it's programming. Like I say, they, they a lot of people come over here, and that's why they treat you the way that they do when they come here. It could be the Koreans that came to your neighborhood and started selling you shit, and they treat you like like menace to society. Yeah. Hurry up and die. Yeah. You know? They just want like, your money. They really don't give a fuck about. Think about shit. it. Think about it like this. Every Chinese store, right, in the hood, none of them have tables in there. Nigga, get your food and get the fuck out of here. They got the bulletproof <laughs> glass in case you want to start talking shit. Yeah, we got the bulletproof glass, the dirty menu. The dirty, the dirty menu. menu. They'll sell you anything you want, but you cannot stay here and, and eat. Yeah, They've been social distancing before social distancing was the thing. Oh, yeah. You want egg roll? Yep. All right, here's your egg roll. Egg roll. Get the fuck out. Yeah, if you ask them for a duck sauce or... uh. Uh, extra fortune cookie to give you an attitude. Like, yes. You know what I mean? But that's, like I said, you don't have to be, Candace is living proof. You don't have to be white to be a white supremacist, man. It's, right. But the funny thing is, you know, they they don't, I don't I don't know any white people that's really fucking with her like that. You know what I, mean? I don't you think make- so either because she, she sounds like she's trying too hard. You know that, that new kid at school that tries to be down? Like, he wants to. He he'll throw the biggest rock off the bridge at the car just to prove that he's oh, yeah, you know, with the cool kids. And that's that's who she is. That's what they. I want cools to understand. You will never impress them as much as you think. You know, you're thinking that you're using the system, but at the end of the day, they still look at you like you just want to us. You just a a sellout. You a traitor. You're the mm-hmm. worst kind of person. 
And uh, and so Candace Owens, another thing that she did was she brought up George Floyd's criminal uh, history, oh, yeah. his and record. Got from the media. The media does that. They did it with Mike Brown. Oh, well, he was buying blunts when he went to the store. I'm like, so what? <laughs> oh, they'll build like Ahmaud Arbery. They brought up his criminal record and put up his mugshot. That's an assassination of, of one's character. That's a trick that they do. She got, she learned it from them. So she's learning. And she and, did, and she read it all off, right? And you know what bugged me the most is, all right, if you call yourself a black conservative, right? I would think that you would know a little bit about the law. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you claim that you're quote unquote above, or you think that you're bad. And she identified herself as black, which fucking blew my mind. I was like, this woman is out of her fucking gourd, but she doesn't, what I, what I was trying to get people to understand is when you go into that system, that criminal system, it's a revolving door. You get in trouble for something, you know, whatever, selling drugs, or you get caught with a gun, stolen cars, whatever it is, at at your younger age, that thing follows you. So you come home, you're on parole, probation, you freaking get caught doing something else, jaywalking, hanging out with other felons, you're going right back in there. So everything she was reading off sound like they were violations, and that's why he kept going back to jail and going back to jail and going back to jail. But point being, what somebody did years ago does not define who they are today. Like yeah, Martha Stewart went to jail and that bitch got a show. She, I mean, she, and she, Martha Stewart was out here, man. She, she got the bag too. Like, and Snoop and she was in jail. Yeah. So, I mean, everyone's past is what, I mean, I'm pretty sure Candace Owens got a pass. I mean, but oh, exactly. why that man got killed. I could see if he, 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 he had the AK out there and they right. had to, get them down by any means that's different you know what i mean yeah i don't know that's just a, i don't know how that bitch sleeps at night next to a white man protecting his uh with his white privilege she sleep on a bed of white privilege he tries to she tries to console as much of his white privilege as possible yeah. and um dude, that that really pissed me off that whole video and you know i was just like and when she was like we as black people i was like who is we like you you aren't one of us because for the what'd you say? You're speaking for the coon community. Yeah, might as she's well because gonna she's gonna coon any opportunity she she gets. She's gonna do it. Cause yeah, she and like to bring up a man's criminal past as if that's reason or that's enough reason to justify murdering this man in in the middle of the yeah. street on film. <laughs> But then she says she doesn't justify the murder. She says she stands and hopes the family gets justice. But you just want to put a little nudge in there and say, well, he was a criminal. Right. Yeah, just yeah, nudge and be like, well, he wasn't perfect. It did, perfect doesn't matter. That you, looks like something you would see on Fox News. Yeah. Like, uh, John Hennedy would go on and say, well, this man shouldn't be a hero. He was a criminal. And they'll bring up his rap sheet. And then they'll say, well, I kind of hope the family gets justice and sneak that in there. That's, right. that's Fox News tactic that she used. She's probably trying to get a job. Yeah, right. with Fox. I can see her with Fox News. I can see her. I could a- too. They, they give her and what's that other chick, Tommy Lauren? They give them a oh, show. She got kicked off, but yeah, Tommy Lauren. Yeah. I mean, they could bring it back. Whatever, you know. Yeah. She's got white you know, privilege. Out of work too long. Yeah. Um. All right. I want to also leave on um on this note, um, because I was uh having this conversation earlier, and I was saying nobody complains more than a white man. Nobody in this country, a white man complains like a fucking baby. Oh, this ain't fair. That ain't fair. It's like, motherfucker, you have... Last person that should be complaining. <laughs> exactly. That's right. like having a, a fucking uh, a black car with no with no limit, and you complaining about you ain't got yeah. no money. That's, you the, last, can that's something. the last sympathetic figure in this country is the white man. You, 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 you fucking, you run the damn country. How the fuck can we feel sorry? Like, I don't want to hear a white guy's problems. No. And, and, and that, that bug, and like, when you, when you hear that statement, just look at everything that's going on around. Because those are the ones that are complaining. Oh, this isn't right. They're freaking getting in people's faces for protesting. Like, why are you mad at them for protesting? Your life is fine. You because can freaking, you can sit on somebody and, it's that exactly. Yeah, and they don't want to see change. They don't want to see the America that they've been around, that they've been a part of all this time, 
change, even though it's not going to affect them any differently. They just don't want to see it. But like I say, the white woman might have more less more sympathy than the white man. I mean, they didn't let their woman vote until the fifties. Yeah, you know, but they just don't want to see any progress at all. Even though black people being treated equally, that's not going to stop the average white guy who's got a nice house and a nice job. That's not going to affect you. No, so, it isn't. It ain't going to stop your money. And they heart. You know, the, the hatred in your heart is what's making you mad about it. But it's like, get over it. Yeah. But you know what is going to um, stop them? Opioids. And that's by their own doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're and, supposed uh, to be outnumbered. In, a, in about 10 years, they're saying that white people are going to be outnumbered by minorities. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and that's our show this week, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I thank y'all for tuning in. Um, yeah, next time we'll come back with Dr. Oz or somebody, and we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll we'll try to we'll try to you know make it a little happier. But um, this is where we're at in America. Like I got to keep the energy the same as it is right now for the rest of my people. I can't come in here and be all happy and all this other stuff when happy, the country yeah. around it's it's burning down out there. You know, like I, I'm I'm in a good space in my life but mentally like no it's it's bad out here you know i don't know what's around the corner and i don't know what could happen today or tomorrow Shit, i don't know what could happen leaving my house right now but uh, so i had to take a break off social media for the weekend a little it's a little too overwhelming but uh like i say it was it is what it is but it is you know everybody be safe out there and if you go on the protest wear your mask and shit and, definitely uh, be careful for tear gas. Basically, don't protest between the hours of six o'clock and beyond because that's when the shit pops off. And I don't want to see people bringing their kids out there. Yeah, uh, definitely but, don't. Um, don't bring them. I seen that little video, that little black girl. She's like four years old. Oh, I'm yeah. Like, oh, I'm like, oh, God. I don't know what was more sad. The fact that a little girl is that advanced at four years old. No child should be protesting. She, she, was, know she was serious, people. too. She had a lot of energy behind her. And I'm like, at four years old, I wasn't even on no, like, I didn't even know what racism was. Nope. And that's how it's supposed to be. You're not supposed to see no. those things. The innocence of a child, she shouldn't even be out there knowing what that is. And then the fact that you got her out there, and I'm not a parent, but I, I wouldn't have my kid, unless my kid was at least 15, and I'd be with him. Right. Uh, not having my kids out there. And my yeah, no, uh, that's not a place for, for your kids, but I also believe in not telling people how to parent, so... Yeah, yeah, that's just my, you know, me talking shit, but I mean. No, yeah, I know, I, I agree with you, I yeah, agree. That, that video made me, like, made my skin crawl, I was, and she looked like a grown-ass woman. The way yeah, she, she had a lot of energy, and somebody said that, too, they was like, I don't know what's more sad, the, the uh, passion in what she's saying, or the fact, fact that, that she's four, she's and she knows what's going on. She just got potty trained two years ago, and she's out there on the block talking about no justice, no. I'm like, y'all watch that. Straight out the diaper to the streets. It's bone chilling, and I'm like, yeah. I, I was mixed. I was like, I'm like, no, man, no four year old shouldn't. No, when I was four, I was my my parents had a hard time trying to get me not to color on the walls and not mm-hmm. put shit in my nose. I wasn't out there fucking protesting. Exactly. Let, right. Let's bring back. Let's bring back kids having regular lives again, but. Yeah. Until until um, things change and we get some sort of, uh, I don't know the word, because I don't want to say peace because it's, I don't think there's ever going to be peace, but until we get some sort of respect, I want to say, I don't think that um, the, the, the children of today, like the young ones that are being born from, you know, in this next decade going forward, uh-huh. it's not going to be the same for them. And unfortunately, we all got a lot of work to do. So... I want to thank you, salute you for uh, coming through. Hope you feel better. All right, and yeah. uh, and I'll be in touch. And uh, you guys out there, thank y'all for watching. Make sure y'all share this video with uh, your people. Like, subscribe, subscribe. Share. You know, put us on. We'll put you on. Yes, sir. And, uh, until next week, I'm Ant Dammit, Frankie Diamonds. We'll talk to y'all. All right. All right.